All right, so we're unpacking why we worship here at the Foundry Church for the next three weeks. This past week, we talked um, about uh, the approach to God, and we use the song, Boldly I Approach, and it's a great song by Ren Collective. If you can get it on iTunes or whatever and listen to it, you'll love it. Um, but what I want to talk about is really out of Hebrews chapter 4. That's what spurs this song forward, and... Um, and I think it's important that we understand that worship is the response of the Christian. Worship is not something we do. You may be called to be a plumber, um, a construction worker, a teacher, a pastor, um, I, I don't know, whatever, a film person, Kyle, behind the camera. Um, whatever you're called to do is something God called you to, but you were made to worship. You were made for worship. That is what your life is supposed to be. So really, what we're talking about today is how do we approach God? This is what Hebrews 4 says. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who is tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he didn't sin. Let us then... Approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Here's the deal. We come to God and worship not because of who we are, but because of who Jesus is. Jesus, the great high priest, did everything we needed. Remember the Old Testament. You would have had, um, you would have had a high priest in there uh, who understood the structure of worship. And in the Old Testament, the, whole, the high priests are set apart. They're set apart. They, they're doing endless streams of sacrifices, burnt offerings, sin offerings, grain offerings, thank offerings, the daily offerings of sacrifice at 9 and 3 p.m. It would have been a busy life. And in that busy life, they would have been set apart as the tribe of Levi, separate from the community. And with these endless sacrifices, one thing's true. There would have been an endless line of death in front of them. Death was always in front of the priest. It was always present because where there is sin, there is death. God wanted his people to know the cost of sin. But then if you look at the high priest Jesus, as we just talked about in Hebrews, we recognize that Jesus was not set apart. He became one of us. He was incarnate. He was God. We call it Christmas, the incarnation. Um, so we recognize that Jesus was one of us. He became one of us. He is the perfect sacrifice. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice because he was holy and he was sinless and he was blameless, yet he died our death. And then we understand Jesus understands our sufferings. Jesus knew what it was to suffer. He was rejected by his own. He was rejected to the point of crucifixion, but he was also raised in a situation where we don't have to go all the way into it. He would have understand every human suffering we have, even the sufferings that are coded in good things. He was really popular at times. He was loved by people. He healed people. He was offered money. He was offered influence. But Jesus never took his eyes off what mattered. And eventually Jesus wasn't a high priest who had death ever before him. Jesus Christ died our death. Then he conquered death and hell. So we recognize in what Jesus did and being our high priest allows us to do as Hebrews says, let us approach the throne, God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace. How do we approach? We approach by worshiping. We don't hold back. We just give back to God all that he deserves, our praise, our worship, and our love. But we also need to know why we worship. Why do we do this? Because we understand and we're thankful for the gift of salvation in Christ, that it's not up to me to get everybody to heaven or to get myself to heaven. It's Jesus' work and his work is complete and it's finished and it's good for me. It's good for the world. We are receiving the grace of God. So we understand why we worship is because of the good thing that God did in saving us and because he's God, he's holy, he's high and lifted up. And how we worship, well, we just pour ourselves out with great love and adoration. We don't stand stiff and just like, oh, we live it. Our lives are meant to worship. You may be called to do something, but you were made for worship. You were made for worship. Hi, I'm Bella, and this is my dad, Eric, and we have your questions. Have you ever heard the phrase, the answer is no, until you ask? So here's your question. When have you ever boldly approached someone with a request? Question number two, what would have been the hardest part about the old days living in the sacrificial system that Eric just described?
verse 15 of Hebrews 4 tells us that Jesus was tempted in every way. And I, I think my question is, do you find like that hard to grasp? Is that hard to imagine? Question four, if something happens, are you normally a big reaction or a small reaction? Boo. Ah. So apparently she's reserved. <laughs> she has a small reaction. <laughs> Good job, boo. Question number five, what is worship to you? So I'm Eric. I'm Bella. And we have done your questions today. Yay! <laughs> Good job. Have a great Servant Bay small group, guys.